What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we're doing the CO for River Guide. Now I know a couple of, or more than a few people may not know exactly where this location is so we're going to go through how to get there in the first place. Essentially you're going to need to go over to Lime Grave, over into the eastern portion and find this Lost Grace, the Mistwood outskirts. And just over here to the right, as soon as you get the uh, map unlocked for this area, you'll notice this big tree. There'll be a little dome shaped object over here instead of what I have on the map. But that's where we're going to take a lift down. I'll show you exactly how to get there. Uh, it would be a good idea to kind of just put a one of those blue check marks there. That way you can just easily guide yourself straight into it. But it's pretty much a straight walk in. Do be aware there are some uh, bears in this area that are uh, quite frustrating to deal with. Pretty strong. So do avoid them at all cost. They are not easy to take down and very aggro. But from that point... Just like that, we're straight into it. Now, let's jump straight into the guide. All right, Tarnished, let's get into it. Now, immediately once we get into this uh, well, we'll take the lift down, and on our right is going to be our first uh, Lost Grace for this area. Now, we'll push down, and on our right next to this pillar is going to be a Gold Rune. Then we'll push a little bit more off to the right, and in this back corner, we're going to find one of those uh, finger things, and just... Off to the uh, right of that is going to be another one of those glow boards. You want to pick that up for those summons upgrades. Just further off to the right, we've got another one of those fireflies. Now heading left from there, we're going to have a body next to this stairway. That's going to be another gold rune. And then we'll push up the stairwell onto the right. And inside of this room, there's going to be some enemies. A bit slow, but they won't be able to get staggered. But on the right, we're going to find another smithing stone. On the left, on this small stairwell, we'll find another smithing stone. And then... We'll clear out the enemies from this area so we don't get uh, pushed from behind as the next area we're about to push in up those stairs is going to be pretty packed with some of these slow moving enemies. But after we go into this room, grab up that uh, golden centipede. We'll push up the stairway and we'll find another gold rune, I believe. Yes, right there. And now there's a couple of magical enemies right here and more than a few of these slow, uh, unstaggerable enemies. So be careful while you're taking these down and don't get surrounded. Could be very punishing for you. But up there on the right, crafting material and some rainbow gems. And then we'll head up, take a right, and get over to this uh, top portion. Another crafting material right there. Now, this is one of the uh, secret spots that uh, some people may miss. We're going to need to jump up on top of this wall and then walk along these uh, pillars, I believe. Now, from this point, we'll take a left over here. Start jumping up over there, and we'll have two of the magical type enemies. Take them out, and on our right, I believe, another gold room. No, it's going to be some uh, throwing knives. Now we'll need to jump down to the statue inside the room that we were just in. There's going to be a scarab on top of it, and I believe, uh, what was it? We'll, we'll see here in a second. I believe it's one of those chicken feet things that give us more runes whenever or for a temporary period of time. Yeah, correct. Now we'll hit that scare, get him on down on the ground. We'll still have enough time to grab him. And I believe we'll get another spell out of this one. Now from this point, we'll turn around, start heading back, and go back up the stairs on the right. Should queue up soon enough. There we go. We're rolling. All right, Alpac. Lead us on. Now from this po uh, position, we'll push... Just left of the stairs and then over into this riverway. Don't even worry about the enemies. Just grab up the uh, gold rune and I believe crafting material. No, it's going to be another smithing stone. Some fireflies in that corner. And just before we head up the stairs on our right next to this tree, another glow wart. Now, there's going to be a gold rune on the left side of these stairs. You'll need to get off your horse for whatever reason. Can't pick it up while on the horse in that position. But from this point, we'll head up the lift and we'll be in the main portion of the Siofra. Sio River, goodness, I swear, that name gets me every time. But immediately outside of that, we're going to take a left and go down to this room on our left. Inside here, I believe, is going to be some consumables. These will be used to uh, take off some of that scarlet rot if you ever get that in certain areas. going to be very important for a later uh, area in the game, but we'll be able to craft it as well. But from that portion, we'll start heading forward. It's going to be a body over here with some crab legs and a crab. Beware of that one, you know, take that one down if you have to. But it's also going to be some more of that uh, crafting material on the body. And then we'll keep heading forward until we see a tree on our right. There'll be another glow board over there. And on our left is going to be our second Lost Grace location. Now from this position, we'll immediately head out a little bit. And then off to the left, we'll kind of double back on top of this uh, cliffside. 
And back here is going to be another one of those cookbooks. Now from this position, we'll keep going along this left wall. We'll see uh, one of those things that is familiar or what is it? Uh, I guess a shrine that we need to light the fire on or monument. Similar to uh, the thing we saw in Nakran City, but just behind that on the rock, we're going to find another one of those consumables or crafting material. can't remember which one it is. And just around the corner on our left next to this wall is going to be another gold rune with a couple of enemies here and there spawning in. There'll be the spectral animation. And from that point, we'll essentially be kind of riding the left wall. And over here on the left, we're going to find another one of those finger things. And just bat past that inside of this room, going to be quite a few plants, but inside it's also going to be a smithing stone. You can take out the plants, but it's not necessary. Just going to gain some runes and crafting material. But from that position, we'll keep running off to the left, maintaining a position on this wall until we reach this uh, makeshift fort slash uh, railing. Now be aware, as soon as you start going up this uh, ladder, there's going to be a guy starting to kick down at you. But take him out pretty quickly, you know, come back down. Then over on our right, I believe it's going to be another gold rune. No, it's more of a crafting material right there. And just over here on the right, we'll need to drop down on this wooden platform. And we'll be able to uh, move off to the left and grab up another gold rune. Now we'll keep heading across this wooden platform into this room. We're going to find uh, kind of a tucked away vendor over here. He's got a couple of items that you may want to buy up. He's got some of those stone sword keys. He's got larval tears, some cookbooks. Don't know if the uh, weapons or uh, arrows are possibly something you want to pick up, but maybe if you're an archer, could be something beneficial for you. But just off to the left of him, we'll find some uh, large bones. Now we'll be back in the room where the plants were. We'll head back over to that uh, wooden compound. Now just off, off here on the left, we're also going to have another one of those chicken feet. Missed that the first time going by, but grabbed it up the second but we had to come back up here anyway as there's another spot we need to drop down on the left just before going into that room over there. And right here is going to be, I believe, another smithing stone. Boom. We've got that one. Now we'll jump off from here and keep riding that left wall for right now. Now there's going to be two enemies over here and another one of those monuments. We'll need to light that up. As we're going to need to light up eight of them inside of this area. And I'll show you the rest in the later portion of the video. Now from this point, we're going to kind of take a right, go towards the middle of the map, and grab up this next Lost Grace, somewhere in the midpoint of the entire map. Now you'll notice some floating orbs hanging around certain portions of this map as well. They'll discharge some electricity at you, but you should be able to outrun it fairly easily. But here on the left on this stone structure, we're going to find another one of those smithing stones. And over here on the right, there will be another smithing stone, I believe. And there are going to be some archers over here that have absolute aimbot. Doesn't matter how fast you're moving on that alpaca, they are going to nail you. And for quite a bit of damage if they do have that magical shot getting charged up. But heading up there, there's also going to be another one of the somber smithing stones. Level 7, I believe, up on top of here. As well as a portal that's going to take us to the lower portion of the Nakran Eternal City. I believe if you go through this portal, you'll actually progress the Rani quest line to the point where it will push the festival to already happening. So if you go to Red Main Castle, you'll pretty much lose uh, two boss fights and uh, a good bit of loot if you do this. So I suggest... Not doing this until you've completed the Red Main Castle. Now going back to the Lost Grace that we just obtained in the middle of the map. We'll start heading directly through the middle and we're going to go and meet up with Wolfman and then grab some loot from up behind him. Now just over here on the right is where Wolfman's going to be. You're going to want to talk to him just to progress that uh, quest line. And then we'll need to jump down onto this uh, swirling air pool. Lift ourselves up onto this broken bridge. Now, there's going to be a couple of pieces of loot over here on our right. It's going to be another one of those globe wards. Want to grab that up so you can upgrade some of those summons. More than likely, you're going to need more than a handful. There's a lot of great summons out there, but I highly suggest grabbing that mimic one. If you don't know where it is, check my uh, Nakron Eternal City Guide. But just at the very end of this, you'll also notice there's another broken bridge off in the distance, and it looks like some guy's standing on it. Later in the video, I will show you how to get over to that portion. But on our right, we're going to have another piece of loot over here. I believe it's going to be a stone sword key, which is kind of funny, kind of ironic. This is uh, actually needed in order to uh, get over to that guy on the other side of the broken bridge. Not sure if they 
pretty much laid it out that way or not, but it may be one of those kind of hints at uh, this is where it needs to go or this is what's needed in order to progress over there. Now from this position, we'll need to jump down onto this uh, other portion of the broken bridge. We need to jump over to the left, not actually to the right. Probably should have stated that before I started jumping off to the right. Maybe some people will fall down. My bad, guys. But we'll jump over onto this left broken portion and we'll kind of just slowly walk our way over to the left. We'll drop down on here, but don't drop down just yet. Drop over to this other lower portion right here, then drop down. If you drop down from that highest point, you will end up just splatting on the ground. Very tragic. I've already had it happen, but hopefully you didn't already do it. But on the other side of this, we're going to find another one of those uh, or just some regular arrows. Do be careful. Do not fall off. It's going to be very frustrating if you do jump for the swirling air pool, but we'll spawn back at the uh, lost graves we found in the middle again. And this time we're going to start delving deeper. We'll head over to the right a bit. There's going to be a piece of uh, or a smithing stone right behind that enemy over there. Also, don't know why I picked up, didn't pick up this loop, but there's one on the rock on the left of us right here. You'll be able to pick that one up fairly easily, then take out the enemy. And on our far left is going to be another one of those scarabs, giving us another one of those uh, magical abilities, I believe. That's going to be an Ash of War. But from that point, we'll progress upward. And on our left is going to be about five rats, one of them being a bigger one and two different enemies. After we clear these guys out, it shouldn't take too long, especially on horseback. We'll hit that monument up, light that flame up, and just off to our right over here is going to be another one of those monuments. There's going to be a couple of rats and two enemies here, so be ready for that. But then, light up that monument. Now up ahead, there's going to be two archers over here, and on our right is definitely going to be about three rats, I believe. So, make sure you take them out, and take them out fairly quickly, because those archers, I swear, man, they, they have got that, they've got an eagle eye. I mean... The guy on my right that's closer doesn't even notice me yet, but that guy off in the distance, if you don't take them out, they will be sniping you from halfway across this map, I promise you. So go ahead and take those out as quick as possible. Very frustrating. I have died several times to these guys, and it, it's it's a doozy. But over here on our left, going to be the last Lost Grace location within the Siofra map itself. And then we'll be able to take a lift up over here to a completely different area now in this... Uh, on this lift, essentially what we're going to do is just take it up and then grab the Lost Grace location after it. I'll be doing a guide on this area a little bit later on, but just on the stairwell we'll also find a talisman. Gives us a bit more focus. Now we will need a uh, stone sword key for this, but we'll lift all the way up. And essentially I believe this is the only way to access this one area in the map. It's kind of like a deep trench and I don't believe there's any way to climb down it. I think the only way is to take this lift up. So we'll need that Lost Grace for later on. But from that point, you want to walk out here and you want to grab that Lost Grace just in case you uh, end up dying out here. Otherwise, you'll be stuck uh, spawning up top at that last Lost Grace that we got topside. But from this point, we'll take out those arches again and we're going to kind of beeline for the right side. We've got a little bit of a secret area over here. You'll notice I died and it was because of those archers. I tried to just run past them. Didn't work out too well. Right here on our left side is going to be another one of those uh, golden seeds increasing our uh, number of flasks we can hold. But over here on the left, we'll need to jump onto this uh, outside uh, outside pillar, I suppose. And be careful walking around this, but we're also going to find, I believe, another stone sword key. So we're kind of making back what we're using in this run right here. And we can also buy more from that vendor previously. But from this point, we'll kind of walk off and then head over to the right we're going to kind of ride this left wall all the way down. You know, there's a lot of notes saying, ooh, we've got a hidden path over here. Trust me, they're trolling as, uh, trolling as ever. But down here, we've got another rune arc. Don't even worry. I've already hit all these walls. Trust me. But from this point, we'll need to head back over to the Siofra Riverbank Lost Grace Checkpoint. Now we're going to light up the last four of those uh, monuments that we need in order to activate the boss itself. Now, we've already gotten this one on the left. Forgot about it, but still had it in the footage. So we'll immediately take a right from that position. Now, over here in this middle area, three archers are going to spawn. You're going to want to take them out in succession before they start lighting you up. Trust me, if you don't get it done, you just try to run for that monument. They are going to light you up, and it's it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be another one of those 
desk to the counter. But right there, that's going to be the monument. We'll grab that one up and over to our right. It's going to be off to the right of that pillar where the teleporter is. But up here in front of us is going to spawn three different enemies. You'll want to take them out fairly quickly before the archers notice you. And then head up on top of this uh, peak over here. There's going to be an archer that spawns and a chieftain. So watch out for the chieftain. He'll come charging at you. If you get stuck in that uh, charge, he's definitely going to stun lock you for a second. But that's going to be uh, the third one. We're going to get the fourth one after we kill all these archers. Make sure to clear these guys out before you start pushing forward because whew, they can get you some from some crazy angles. But over here on the left, it's going to be that monument. You may have already grabbed it by this point since we already walked by it, but I didn't tell you to grab it previously, so just showing it again just to make sure that you know where that final one was just in case you didn't grab it in that moment. Now we'll go back to that Siofra riverbank. And this time we'll head off to the right. We'll kind of go up on this uh, ledge over here. It's going to be uh, another two items, I believe, at the top. We'll take out three of those uh, spectral enemies over here. And we'll get a little bit more crafting material and a shield. Any of those shield bearers out there? I'm not sure whether or not it's uh, something very solid, but could come in handy, especially if you're just running in this at the early game. Now from this point, we'll kind of head over to the right side. We're actually going to go underneath the stairwell of where the uh, the boss fight is going to be. And just over here on the left, for whatever reason, you can't go through that middle portion. There's plenty of room, but there's some type of invisible wall stopping us. But we'll get some type of uh, bow out of this. I'm not sure if it's really that great. Any of those bowmen out there, you know, let me know down, down in the comments if it's something worthwhile. I'm um, using nothing but that Bloodhound uh, greatsword. But over here on the left, we'll finally be ready for that boss fight. And just before we walk in, we'll be able to find the map for this. Probably should have put it at the beginning, but it's really not going to hurt you not having it. It's just going to unlock the colorful picture of it. All we really needed was the uh, Lost Grace locations. But from this point, we'll grab the horns of that deer... And we'll get straight into this boss fight. Now, this one is going to be very different, or a little bit different, from the uh, Nakron Eternal City boss fight. It's essentially the same boss, but in this one, he won't be doing the drain life move. He'll be doing, I think the first move he pulls off is going to be the Rudolph the Reindeer stomp you out move. He'll come on down, you'll just need to dodge right underneath his uh, hooves. Then, you know, he's got that uh, Rudolph the Blue Nose snot shot. Do not get hit by that snot. Trust me, it's going to be a painful one if you uh, do get hit by that. Then he's going to start uh, bucking with his antlers left and right at you. Very simple to really dodge these moves. You really want to dodge closer underneath him, kind of get under his legs. Especially in those moments when he first gets it done, you should actually be able to get underneath his legs and just keep chopping away at him. You'll notice it here in a second. It took me a minute to figure it out, but boom, right there. We're just essentially getting up underneath those legs, avoiding all of that blue snot that he's spitting out. And just making sure that we can close in and get a little bit of damage on. But he's not exactly that strong. I believe the other one was a bit stronger. It had a bit more health to it, but should be a fairly easy fight to take on. You really don't have to worry about all that much except for a couple of stomps and just him raking those antlers across the way. Blue snot should be really easy to avoid, so... As long as you're not running into it, you know. But that, that's going to be on you, man. I, I told you about it. <laughs> but here it is, finally, getting it done. And from at the end of this boss fight, we will be getting a new summons from this, and it's going to be one of the archers from those Spectral Warriors outside. Pretty simple. Now, from this location, I believe... I can't remember. All right, we're about to have the footage in front of us. That's right. Now we're going to go and see where that guy was on that broken bridge. You'll need to go to the Bell Fries, which is going to be off to the east of the uh, Rhea Lucaria. You'll have the location there if you need to go back. Obviously, pause it right there. Check out the location. Very easy to spot and very easy to get to. But as soon as we spawn here or as soon as you get up to the top of this hill, on the left was going to be a chest that has a stone sword key. There's three portals over here, and we're going to need to go through the middle one. Now, I'll be doing a guide later on for the other two portals. They actually do go to different areas themselves, but this one will bring us to that portion of the map inside of the Siofra River. 
that has that guy standing by himself on uh, that piece of the broken bridge. Now, once we go through the portal, it'll tell us we're in the Nocturne Eternal City, but I believe it's just because we're up a bit higher than CO4 River from this point. Now, we'll need to head down carefully, and it'll be more towards the right in the gameplay footage. Oh, I should have edited this a little bit better, but at least you're seeing the uh, the full guide going through. We'll need to be... It's kind of... It's a bit tucked away. It's hard to see those uh, drop points but it'll just be off to the right. You'll see the edge of it, and then we'll be able to make it right on down. Now, there's not all that much here. There's only going to be one piece of loot, technically, and it's going to be, uh, well, I forget about this. We've also got a glow board over here on the left, but it's going to be a talisman, and I believe it's going to be the one that raises uh, the attributes of uh, robustness, immunity, and focus, I believe. Not sure how good that is for some people out there. Me personally, I, I've never had to use it other than one time for just the immunity boost, but it could be great for that moment. Now, we've got a Crucible Knight actually over here. I hate knights in this game, and he is a bit different from every other Crucible Knight. He may not be a boss character, but he's got the ability to shoot flames. Now, that is something different. Now, once you kill this guy, you're not going to get anything other than runes. You could obviously just skip this guy if you wanted to, and then... From this point, we'll be getting to the final portion. We'll need to head up to the Nocron Eternal City area at the Ancestral Woods. This is going to be that grand finale. We'll have a secret wrapped in a secret with this one. You're going to like this one. It's going to be a bit of a surprise. Now, from the point of that Ancestral Woods uh, Lost Grace location, well, essentially, well, in the gameplay footage here, I go off to the left kind of follow where I'm going. We're essentially going for that left wall over here. I was just kind of checking something out before uh, pushing over to this location. But from this position, we'll head over to the left, and it's going to be a good bit of uh, jellyfish over here. On our left, we'll be able to jump down over here, and we've got a double boss fight coming up and a couple of other things as well. Now, before heading off to the left down that trail, we'll need to head off to the right and grab up this stone sword key going to be useful for a lot of things later on but then over on our right why, why is this slowing down all of a sudden i'm not sure why it uh, slowed down there but over on our right we're going to have that lost grace location and then pushing over to the left riding along the rest of this ridge we're going to need to jump do a double jump make sure that or possibly jump on that railing just before and jump down here onto this uh, platform it's going to be another one of those crucible nights. Very irritating, especially in this closed, confined uh, area. But funny enough, I finally got a lucky break with one of them. He just flew straight off. But we will get a crucible horn shield from that. Could be pretty solid for some of those shield bearers out there. Not exactly sure. But right down the path where that crucible knight came from, we're going to have some uh, golden centipedes and a cookbook and then we'll just need to double back to where we just were and essentially keep going straight forward don't go off to the right it's just going to be a dead end right there now we're going to be facing a different type of crucible knight on our right here he, he's a bit different but he, he just essentially is going to be the one with the the halberd or spear type of weapon and he is he's pretty devastating and pretty irritating even though he doesn't have a shield we can deal some damage damage pretty quickly to him since he doesn't have that shield but at the same time he's pretty quick and he's got some range to him just like that other uh, crucible knight but after a pretty lengthy fight and getting picked off by a couple of those smaller uh, weaker enemies we'll finally get it done and start pushing on off to the right now inside of this room we'll head off to the right and over in this location over here there's going to be another scarab in this next room. We'll need to take that out. Get another one of those magical abilities, I believe. Something to do with faith, I'm pretty sure. And just behind him, off to our right, is going to be another gold rune, I believe. Yes, correct. And before heading out, off to our left is going to be another gold rune and a golden centipede. You'll notice it down there on the left. But on the broken bridge on to our left, we're going to get another gold rune. That's going to be uh, the level 13 version. Not sure how many that's uh, grabbing up for you, but I believe it is quite a bit. From that point, we'll double back to where we came from, and just off to the left of where the Crucible Knight is, or was, there's going to be another smithing stone. 
now we'll just head back down this hallway. Goodness, I made this a bit slower than it should have been. But in the middle of this room, we will find another gold rune, I believe. Correct. And on our left, there's going to be a room with at least one throwable enemy and two of the shield-bearing ones. They, whew, they almost got me trapped in that corner. I'm getting frustrated just watching this. But if you have that moment, roll to the end of days. Get on out of that room and health pot it up. Because these enemies are very weak. They're pretty much a one-shot ability. But if you if they do get you in that corner, they will stagger you to death. And I hate those shield bears. But on our right is going to be another one of those rune arcs. We'll head on out of this room. And as soon as we come out, we're going to get ambushed by about four enemy. No, actually five enemies. There's two archers in underneath that waterfall. And there's another room inside of here. It's going to give us another smithing stone. Then we'll double back out of this area. Goodness, just trying to find some of those hidden pathways. You know, I keep getting trolled by some of those messages on the ground. But over on our right, there's going to be a guy sitting on the floor before we get to the boss fight itself. He's going to essentially give us another type of gesture. He's pretty much just going to moan on the ground for about a minute. So just, just hit uh, triangle or Y. Just skip through it. He says nothing. It's just weird. But we'll get a gesture out of it. Why, why did I let that go on for so long? I should have just sped that on up. Oh, I, don't, I don't even know why I talked to him again. Goodness. But in this next room, oh, before that, golden centipede on the right. But in this next room, goodness, we've got two uh, gargoyles to deal with, larger gar gargoyles, and uh, they are not easy to get down. Now, straight away, you're going to want to burn this first boss because as soon as we get him to half health, the next one's going to come in, and fighting them both at the same time is excruciatingly painful. You know, I'm, I'm sure I could have gotten it done and other people could have, but it is going to be a whole lot easier if you can take them on one at a time. Now, use whatever summon you have. Get Let them take the aggro and try to deal as much damage as you can to this guy as fast as you can. That way we can just melt this guy down really utilize that uh, summons in this moment and try to use all of your powerful moves on this guy. Just get him down as quick as possible because as soon as we got that uh, halfway health bar, we're about to have that moment boom right there where the second one starts to drop in. Now the second one, he's not going to have an axe. He's actually going to have a, a double blade, double bladed staff. And he is extremely aggro, and he will take you out fairly quickly. He's got a lot of spinning moves to him as well, and he's got an earthquake slam down with the axe that he has. He'll start switching up weapons at certain times. You'll notice it here in the fight. There's going to be that axe slamming down with the earthquake. And he's got some serious reach with it. He will do some small moments of... Uh, flight with it and he's constantly going to try and push back from you you'll notice he also spits out acid in those moments he is going to force you to push away and not be able to close in on him in those moments do not push into that uh, poison you really don't want to have that poison constantly eating away at your health at the same time as dealing with this guy because he can jump quite a distance with all of his attacks but as you'll notice, he does quite a few sweeping moves with that. He'll do some type of uh, enrage in a way. It's not exactly going to be all that powerful, but as soon as he pulls out that double bladed spear, this is when things uh, get very irritating, and more specifically when he starts to spin with it. Now, you'll be able to constantly kind of push into him, but yet again, you'll notice it's one of those moments where he's able to push you back. Now he's doing the spin move. He'll come over here. He'll not only stab you into the face, but he'll also do his little spin move as well. Be sure that every time he jumps up into the air like that, just start dodge rolling away or start running away, making sure you get away from that spin move after he does. Because it is going to deal some serious damage. If you don't have quite the uh, health bar, whew, it's going to be devastating. That's going to be another one of those earthquake moods. Every time you see him lift up that axe as high as he can and kind of hold it for a moment, you'll want to double back, run back a little bit, or possibly just dodge back a couple of times just to make sure you don't get hit by that earthquake move. It will stagger you quite a bit. You'll be on the ground for a moment, and he'll be able to get some serious damage in. You already notice he is quite aggro in this moment. It's sometimes, especially with the camera angle, like the, the sheer 
size of this guy and the uh, target lock of him, you really don't quite... I just couldn't quite judge the distance from me to him all that well in most of these moments. There was more than a few moments where I'm. it's kind of like I'm swinging at thin air and then other moments it looks like, you know, I'm pretty much the same distance I was when I was swinging at air, but yet I'm hitting him. Very frustrating, so keep that in mind. Really try to close in on him as much as you can and essentially just burn that first guy. Now, we're going to get two weapons out of this. We're going to get the double-bladed spear, and we're also going to get an axe, I believe, or no, we're going to get the gargoyle's uh, other sword from the first one. <clears throat> and then the uh, double-bladed spear. Goodness, I should have uh, edited <laughs> edited this a uh, bit better. I really left in that whole moment where I was looking for the weapon, but that's going to be it. There's the gargoyle's twin blade. Twin blade, that's what it was. Goodness, I've been saying double blade this whole time. But from this point, we'll head off to the back left, and there's going to be a Lost Grace location for us. And then we've got the secret wrapped in a secret moment. Now, right after we grab this Lost Grace, we're going to head over underneath that waterfall, and we're going to jump into a coffin. Now, this coffin's going to take us off into a completely different area, and I'll be doing a guide on that area tomorrow. Now, that's going to be it for the CO for a River Guide. Hopefully, this has helped you guys out, and obviously, if you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description, I'll have, uh, or follow me over at Twitch. I'm streaming daily. Going to be on Elden Ring for quite some time for the coming future, as well as if you'd like to see more content like this, obviously, hit that subscribe button. We're pretty much pumping out some daily content guides at this game or at this rate, and I've got tens of hours of uh, footage still stacked away, ready to just compile together and edit down to palatable portions that can help you guys out finding some of those things that you may have overlooked, possibly missed. Who knows? But there's so much content in this game, and so little time. If only I didn't have to sleep. We'd be churning this out a lot faster. But still at the same time, got to take our time, try to make this best as possible for everyone out there so it's easy to follow along now let me know down in the comments if this uh, version of the guide is any better than the previous ones some of the things you might like about it some of the things you'd like to see different made with it appreciate any feedback and trying to make this content even better for the future videos it's greatly appreciated and you know it's always a work in progress but on that note hope you guys enjoyed this and have a good one